Hi there, I'm Alex and welcome back to the Southern Ukulele Store. Uh, this week we're going to take a look at Ohana, Ohana Ukuleles, a brand that we often neglect because they have been quietly and consistently making this wide range of great ukuleles for well over 10 years now. Ohana were the brand that really, at the start of the Southern Ukulele Store, they, they were kind of the first special brand that we had. No one was really doing Ohana, they, you couldn't really get them anywhere outside of the US and I've always had a kind of close connection with the people at Ohana, fantastic people making great ukuleles and uh, yeah we're going to talk today about six models that you probably haven't seen before, six models that stand out amongst other things available at the same price and really a wide variety. So we're going to have three concerts and then three tenors. I'll just remind you if you look in the kind of scroll bar at the bottom you can skip ahead to certain chapters where we talk about individual instruments and I'll make sure today that you can skip ahead to the sound samples. A lot of people I know don't want to hear me speak but if you just want to hear the ukuleles you can skip ahead in that little scroll bar at the bottom. But anyway we're going to crack on today. The first ukulele we're going to look at is the Ohana CK75CG. First up today we're going to take a look at the Ohana CK75CG which you'll notice first of all is one of the few concert ukuleles out there today with such a sheer cutaway. Um, it's not that kind of flick up Florentine style cutaway but it is Florentine in that it has that sharp point edge. It's, it's not really there anything other than to kind of reach the upper frets but on a concert ukulele you can normally do that anyway so there's an element of it being an aesthetic choice but practical too to some players I'm sure. You have a solid spruce top with solid maple back and sides. Really nice abalone strip down the back. And speaking of abalone, you have the abalone front binding all the way around and an abalone rosette. And then the face plate, the head plate up the top here is also very regal with an abalone trim around the outside. And uh, gold tuners with white buttons. It's a good performer's instrument. If you're a concert player that likes to play technical pieces that normally only sound good on a tenor, this might be a really good option for you. The wood combination especially, it's a real performer's wood combination. You have an oven coal fingerboard and bridge, and I like that it has a different bridge style to the other Ohana's, um, bar a couple of models. Still a tie-on bridge with a 35mm nut width, and quite a nice wide string spacing despite the narrow nut. Ohana's have a very unique feel to them. There's not too many brands out there that feel the same as an Ohana in the hands. It has a glossed neck and yeah, it's just a really cool, unique option. There's not many other people out there making concerts with cutaways, let alone all solid wood ones with maple back and sides and a spruce top. So let's give the CK75 CG a play and see what you think. So you're normally seeing it this way around when it's being played, but I have to play it this way around. If you're new to the channel, I'm sorry if that's confusing. Next up today we've got a slightly more well-known model, this is the Ohana CK350G which is an all-solid Hawaiian Koa gloss concert ukulele. It has some abalone trim as well but let's just talk about what makes this one quite special. Koa. You don't really get many factory made you know, Chinese produced Koa instruments. Koa is normally reserved for kind of smaller workshops or people buying you know in Hawaii or Japan at kind of master built and custom shop areas. Koa is much rarer in that kind of sub 500 pound uh, price category but when you do get it it's a real treat. This is abalone on the top and front so it's got a real bling nature to it. It's got that kind of deluxe Kamaka aesthetic to it. You still have the uh, oven coal fingerboard and bridge or I had to double check because it's very dark but yep still listed as Ovencoal. 
35 mil nut and you have a very similar headstock to that previous ukulele very regal with the gold tuners and that abalone trim on the front one thing ohana have always done well is copy from the past and pay tribute to old martin ukuleles and that kind of east coast mahogany ukulele run from the 1920s onwards but i like that this model and a lot of the ones we're going to look at today borrow from other builders this as i mentioned before is much more like a kamaka in terms of the aesthetic detail it's like a hf 2d 2i but on a budget so if you think maybe a kamaka might be well beyond your means and you want something hawaiian koa for well under a thousand pounds then i think this might just be the model for you so let's give the ck 350g a play and see what you think so warm I don't want to put it down What I like most about this next model is we can pretty much forget everything I just said about tradition because Ohana do also embrace contemporary, uh, cool, quirky, limited run designs. Like this ukulele, which is the Ohana CK450QEL. It used to have another name, which was a CK550 something, thumb, something, something, So, but you can discard that because that was a previous generation, had some slightly different features. This 450QEL, if you're wondering what the wood is, I'm going to give you a few seconds to guess before I put it up on the screen. This is quilted eucalyptus. So not a wood you're going to see every single day. In fact, this is the only eucalyptus ukulele I've ever seen. Ohana, as a producer, are the only people I know that have ever had stock of eucalyptus and produced something on a factory level with it. It's also trimmed up to the max with abalone on the front and front binding. You have some rosewood bindings around the outside of the body as well, along with that slightly bigger stylized bridge, which looks like oven coal to me, with an oven coal fingerboard and an inlay, hibiscus inlay, up around the 12th fret. You have the most unique slotted headstock ever. It's got that kind of flight phantom-esque look to it, whilst also being like a kind of Zemeckis guitar, something really cool and quirky from yesteryear. And you have some really, really good open gear, uh, aged brass tuners, I would say, is the finish. It's really hard to kind of describe. Hopefully that's focusing for you. Um, you have still on this a 35mm nut with a slight volute at the end of the neck, which is comfortable but also quite, you know, quite pleasing to look at because it's just so pristine. You have a racing stripe going down the neck, which I would say is the only thing that shows that this instrument is not a custom shop build on first inspection because the racing strip kind of just abruptly ends at the bottom. Uh, not quite straight as well, just a bit off. But it still looks really cool. It's a rosewood and um, maple strip. Possibly eucalyptus, but I think it's maple. And then you have a eucalyptus heel cap as well, which looks really cool. Let me get out of the shot. Finally, you have a comfort armrest just on the top there, so you can hold it in the pub. And when everyone says, what's your ukulele? You can go, oh, it's a eucalyptus Ohana. I got it from the Southern Ukulele Store. And you won't hurt your arm at all when you do that. There's nothing else really to say. We all want to hear how it sounds. Even I want to hear how it sounds. It's been a couple of years since I heard a eucalyptus Ohana. So let's give it a play and see what you think.
Okay, next up today we're going to take a look at the TK70R which is not the most kind of flamboyant, extravagant looking ukulele after the three we've just seen. What it does is it strips all the detail back, so it's a very very basic looking ukulele. A solid spruce top with laminate, rosewood back and sides. Really nice, dark, straight figured Indian rosewood laminate on the back and side. You have just front and back cream binding, and aesthetically it's much like uh, the Martin guitars in the 1930s. It's that D28, triple O28 looking ukulele. And it sounds great, it's really open, it's clean, it's clinical. If you're a really technical player, you're somebody who plays a lot of finger style ukulele, but you're working to a budget of say, 250 to 400 pound. This ukulele is just slightly under that at the time of filming and really holds its own against instruments that are quite a bit more expensive. There's also quite a lot of competition at the same price that do things slightly differently. You have the Kai KTI 700, you have the Flight Diana, which are all glossed instruments with really quirky back and sides woods. And although this one's a bit plainer, it plays a bit tighter, a bit more professionally. And that's not to say that the Diana and the Kai aren't excellent, because for the price they are. But the Ohana is for somebody who perhaps isn't buying their second ukulele, somebody that needs a ukulele they can travel with, maybe put a pickup in. It's a bit more dynamic and it's a bit more of a, I guess like a guitar player's ukulele. You have a very simple abalone rosette on the front. And on the tenors you have a 36mm nut whip, so just a tiny bit wider with a really nice pronounced neck profile. And then on this you have the slotted headstock with the Ohana logo and then those really nice open back Grover style tuners with the cream buttons. I like cream buttons, they just look cool. I'm going to give the TK70R a play and see what you think. And if you like that, but you're thinking, oh, it's not the right size for me, the CK70R is excellent. The BK70R is excellent. So concert, tenor, or baritone, this is a great model. Next up today, we're going to take a look at the TK270G, an all-solid acacia tenor for under £400. And there's lots of choice, but they all do things slightly differently. If you went for the Flight Phantom, you'd have a 38mm nut width and a slotted headstock. But if you didn't want a wide fingerboard, maybe that's not the right option for you. Then you've got the Ponos, which are a bit more pared back and a bit plainer. They're nice, but you know they, they've got 35mm nut width and they feel very stiff. If you're looking for something in between, then I really think the Ohana just, it just sits on the fence perfectly in the middle. The TK270G has an abalone rosette with dark Indian rosewood binding on the front and back. You have a gloss finish on the body and it's really nicely figured. The wood on this instrument Looks lovely, really chocolatey, but still has that orange tint like the Flight Mustang to make it look like Koa. You have an open coal fingerboard and bridge with that slightly wider 36mm nut width. And then you have the Acacia faceplate with gold open back tuners and black buttons. You really are spoilt for choice with ukuleles these days, but at the same time, there are instruments that just fit somewhere in the middle really nicely. And I think that the TK270G does that perfectly. So let's give it a play and see what you think.
Last up today, we're going to take a look at the TK80, which is in itself quite a normal ukulele on the surface to look at, but it's made of really interesting woods that give it a very different sound to how you might expect. The TK80 has a solid Port Orford cedar top with solid Oregon myrtle back and sides. So the woods from this instrument are Californian, Oregon based. You know, the Port Orford cedar is grown in the kind of northern, northern part of California, uh, southern part of Oregon. And then the myrtle is very much known and regarded as an Oregon wood in itself. So you have something that's very West Coast American in the tone woods that it's made of. Still much more affordable as Ohana import these woods out to the Far East and have the instrument put together there. You have maple front binding and back binding to tie it all together with a gloss finish and rope binding on the front which is probably the only thing about it that's quite traditional in in kind of aesthetic quality you still have an open coal fingerboard and bridge with that 36 mil nut width and the face plate that has the rope binding too and those gold open back tuners and why i like this ukulele is because because port orford cedar isn't really a cedar. It's a cypress wood that has its own tonal possibilities and capabilities. It straddles somewhere between cedar and spruce, which gives it a much thicker sound than you're probably expecting. And myrtle is a fantastic substitute for rosewood or maple in that it's quite clean, clinical. It's warm, but doesn't really color the sound in any way. So what you get here is a uke that isn't gonna sound anything like we've heard on this video today. So I guess I should just play it. This is the TK80. Let's give it a play for you now. Thank you for watching. I'm so sorry if there's a few jump cuts in this video that seem a bit jarring. I've been doing this video while there's roadworks going on outside and occasionally just I just hear a drill in the distance and I thought oh, I best stop the video. So there's a few jumpy cuts here, but hopefully you still got the information you need. If you do have any questions though, you can contact me in store on 01202 430820 or you can email the shop at alex at ukulele.co.uk. Um, one question I got asked the other day was about my hat. My hat is a Southern ukulele store hat which you can buy from our website. I'll put a link in the description. I've got a couple of different designs. This is my favorite, something about the flowers. I just like this and Phil who works here designed this logo. So it's nice to support our friends, isn't it? Yeah, anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you next week.